Hi, my name is Amit Hasak, and I'm going to uh, speak a little bit today about exporting of perishable goods from the cold storage and the freight forwarding uh, perspective. Uh, just a little background on myself. Um, I've had about 25 years of experience um, in the cold storage warehousing industry, uh, owned and operated cold storage in Chicago, uh, dealt almost predominantly with exporters of perishable goods, such as frozen beef, poultry, and pork. Um, and my startup Tranship is an automated uh, freight forwarding platform uh, that's also designed specifically for the um, international shipments of full container loads of perishable goods, such as frozen beef, poultry, and pork. Uh, we launched in May of last year, and we are up and running uh, as we speak. So um, exporting 101, um, what does it require? It really kind of requires you to do a lot of homework. Um, you should do a lot of research. Um, the markets you want to enter, um, there's various uh, 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 assortment of markets, as you know, Central America, South America, Asia, Europe, uh, Pan-Asia. Um, they're all unique in their own uh, special way. Um, so you should definitely research the market uh, trends and, and, and what people are looking for uh, to purchase uh, uh, in those markets. Um, you should also research the business ethics and norms. Uh, what we do here in the States doesn't always apply uh, to foreign markets. And so uh, you should always uh, be uh, aware of um, norms um, that are acceptable uh, uh, in the markets you want to enter. Um, research rules and regulations for both domestic and foreign markets. Um, when you export uh, perishable goods, there is uh, definitely USDA regulations you have to abide by. But each foreign country also has their own rules and regulations. Uh, you can go on the FSIS uh, website, which is the USDA website for exports, uh, look up specific countries, um, what kind of rules and regulations regarding uh, documentation, regarding labels that may have to be applied uh, in on boxes. Um, there's all kinds of little intricacies that you should know uh, and find out about uh, prior to exporting uh, your product. Uh, research acceptable terms of pay, uh, payment terms. Um, a lot of uh, 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 companies, for example, in Asia uh, prefer to work by letter of credit. Um, there are pros and cons to doing something like that. Um, uh, ideally, if you're working with a new customer, you may want to get a little bit of uh, payment up front. Um, that's going to be a little haggling or negotiation because you're a new supplier to them. They're a new customer for you. So there's a little bit of a, a feeling out process. Um, and so uh, you should try to get at least some uh, of the payment uh, uh, paid in advance, if it's possible. You can also um, ensure uh, your credit terms that you give uh, um, foreign buyers with companies like Hermes. Um, and, um, and then you have like a, an insurance policy to cover um, any, any unpaid uh, uh, product. Um, and the more you know, uh, the less likely you are to be surprised. Um, the last thing you wanna do is ship product overseas when it hits a port, um, it's denied entrance because because uh, documentation is correct, labeling is correct, the product may not be eligible. There's all kinds of things. So really you gotta do your homework before um, you export uh, any product. Uh, let's uh, focus for a little bit on the cold storage warehousing industry. So what does a cold storage actually do? Uh, cold storage um, basically is an extension of your business. They uh, hold your um, inventory for you until you're ready to ship it either uh, uh, domestically, regionally, uh, and also internationally. And if you're going to be shipping product internationally, uh, there are many cold storages that can do a lot of the export work for you if the plant you're purchasing from does not. Um, that would include working with the USDA to get the required documentation, uh, printing the right labels, inspecting product uh, for export, loading the container clearly is something they, they all do. Um, but uh, uh, it's just uh, an extension of your business. Um, and they, they serve a purpose uh, in the whole food supply chain, both domestically and internationally. Um, and they, like I said, they work with the USDA inspectors and the veterinarians to get documents uh, that are required, such as health certificates, uh, certificates of origin, um, and some other things. Um, each box, when you uh, export a, uh, uh, a load of perishable goods, uh, has to be stamped with a unique number that is assigned by the USDA inspectors um, at, at the facility, either the plant or the cold storage. Um, and some countries uh, in Asia and South America require labeling um, in their language. 
Um, and there's a certain template for each country to do that. Um, so uh, China's pretty meticulous about things like that. Um, these are labels that um, uh, have, have uh, the template, um, uh, either the cold storage or the plant should have those. Again, those are all accessible also on the FSIS uh, website, um, which is the USDA website where you can find all the information you want on any specific country regarding labels, regarding documents, regarding eligible products, eligible plants, eligible facilities. It's really a useful tool. It is, there is a link on our website, tranship.net. Um, at the bottom, you'll see a link uh, to the FSIS website if you want that. Some countries also require what's called trichinosis uh, certification or testing. Um, for a residue that's on pork um, uh, called rectopamine. Um, and so there are cold storages and a few plants, I think, that may do that. It requires uh, the product to sit uh, at a certain temperature for a certain amount of hours uh, to basically kill um, any bacteria that may be uh, uh, left over um, on, the, on the product. Um, and as I said, uh, there are countries that have eligible plants uh, for export. Uh, notably on that list is China, um, and companies sometimes get delisted uh, for certain various reasons and relisted. So you should always check to make sure if you're buying from a plant or using a warehouse that they are eligible uh, uh, to export product um, uh, to those countries. Um, and the last thing that cold storages do is they load the containers because um, if you're not going to be loading it at the plant, um, the product will be arrived on pallets. Uh, at uh, the cold storage. Typically, exporters to maximize the cube in a container uh, will want their product to be uh, floor loaded. So you have to uh, basically, uh, or the warehouse has to take the product off the pallets um, and floor load them uh, onto, the, onto the container. Something you should be careful about uh, when uh, using cold storages. So first of all, uh, be aware or be careful of who the cold storage is. There's um, a handful of national, multinational companies, US Cold, AmeriCold, Lineage. Um, they're really, really big companies. Um, they cater to national accounts. They also cater to smaller uh, companies, but their focus really is on national accounts. Um, if you're working, if you're a smaller exporter, you don't have national accounts with these uh, big companies, there's plenty of other, um, let's call mom and pop shops. They're you know, they're not uh, all small, but, uh, you know, they may have a few facilities uh, as little as one, maybe up to five, 10 facilities. They could probably better serve the smaller exporters since they are uh, more in that mindset or that uh, frame of mind. Um, and therefore, size doesn't always really matter. It really depends on what you're expecting uh, from the cold storage. Um, the bigger guys tend, like I said, to focus with bigger companies who have national accounts. They will take in smaller accounts, but um, you may be charge significantly higher than, than the larger uh, companies, whereas smaller operators uh, may be more suitable for smaller mid-size exporters. Be very careful of hidden fees. Um, uh, there are cold storages that will quote you, you know, um, let's say $10 for storage, $10 for handling. I'm just throwing out a number. I don't know if that's the number, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, um, if you're exporting, you're gonna have a lot of accessorial charges if the warehouse is doing the inspection for you. There's uh, inspection charges, there's uh, certificate charges, there's floor loading charges, stamping, labeling, all kinds of additional charges that I mentioned previously that the cold storage will apply to your invoice. The last thing you want to see uh, when you get an invoice after you've sold your product is that you're paying a lot more for the cold storage than you had originally thought. So uh, make sure that all the charges that are involved in exporting uh, are included uh, in the quote that you get from the cold storage. Um, another thing that you have to do with the cold storage uh, or make sure the cold storage does um, is that you have to coordinate any trucking or, or drayage of the container uh, to and from uh, the warehouse. There are warehouses that will work with you on coordinating that and then there are warehouses that will say that's your problem. Have your vendor, your trucker, uh, your drayage company call us. Um, but make sure that that is done because if it's not done, it can lead to a lot of misunderstandings, a lot of issues. Uh, uh, delays in, in delivering containers or picking up containers. The last thing uh, warehouses like is when <clears throat> a, a full container is sitting um, either in the door, in their yard, and is not being picked up. Um, they don't see that very uh, in, a, in, in a good sense. So make sure that your trucking or drayage company um, is in sync uh, with the warehouse. Uh, you should make sure that all certificates, labels, and stamps are approved by you. 
uh, make sure the cold storage sends you a copy of the certificates uh, uh, of wholesomeness that have to accompany any shipment to make sure that uh, there aren't any mistakes or issues uh, with that certificate. If a certificate is wrong uh, after uh, the product is shipped out, it's not the end of the road, but um, you have to issue an in lieu of from the USDA inspector. That could be problematic sometimes. Um, and you wanna make sure the, the labels and the stamps um, are correct. Uh, because the last thing, like I said before, you don't want your product arriving at the port of destination. The authorities that are looking at the stamps and labels as an issue, they can then either go as far as rejecting the whole load. Uh, it'll definitely cause a delay, which will require uh, warehousing, which costs money. And nobody wants to go down uh, that road. Uh, try to get photos um, of the labeled and stamped boxes, uh, as well as a loaded container for your records. Um, uh, this again is just a reassurance that everything is well. Um, there are, you know, um, fishy characters overseas and they may claim some things, but if you have the proof um, uh, that the product was labeled and stamped accordingly, uh, and the container was loaded accordingly, um, that should uh, resolve any issues that you may have in the future with your customer. Um, and last but not least, uh, uh, cold storages, there are various, uh, uh, array of cold storages there are a lot of old cold storages out there um, I, th I believe the number is like 70 75 percent of all cold storages were built like in the 1980s it doesn't mean that they are inefficient uh, uh, it does mean they're obsolete um, uh, you know they could be inefficient if you compare them to modern uh, uh, automated cold storages or trying to creep up a little bit in the US but much more uh, rampant in in Europe but uh, you, you want to make sure that the facility is, at the very least, uh, kept sanitary um, and can do the work um, and, 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 and not cause any issues uh, with your product. Now a slight uh, move to freight forwarding. Uh, um, what do freight forwarders do? Well, actually, freight forwarding is like a, is like a travel agent uh, for shipping uh, your goods from one country to the other. Um, you basically outsource um, uh, the, the shipping, uh, scheduling, processing, all the headache or work that's required to schedule a shipment from one country to the other, you can outsource to a freight forwarder. Um, what uh, to look for in a freight forwarder? Well, first of all, you want to make sure that they um, know what they're doing. Um, so not all freight forwarders do ship perishable goods. Um, the easier course of action is to ship dry goods because they don't require as much documentation, they don't require, it's not time or temperature sensitive. Um, and so you want to find a freight forwarder that really has had experience in shipping perishable goods because it's a different animal than shipping dry goods. Um, before you commit uh, to any uh, volume with a freight forwarder, it's always best to maybe do a couple of trial shipments with them to see how they handle uh, uh, issues. In logistics, as we all know, uh, things go uh, wrong at the most inopportune time. Um, you want someone on your side that's going to uh, uh, basically help you solve problems and not leave you on an island on your own when things go wrong. Um, so make sure you do some trial shipments before you commit long term with any freight forwarder. Um, and like I said before, do are they uh, uh, specifically geared to perishable goods? Um, Trancher, for example, um, uh, our startup uh, is focused on perishable goods. There's a few other ones out there. They're more traditional freight forwarders. Um, and um, uh, another thing you should ask uh, is if they process any documents. There are documents that the freight forwarder, freight forwarder can process, such as uh, providing uh, documents uh, to the to the ocean carrier, such as AES, uh, VGM. These are these are all uh, kind of certificates that are required uh, to export product. But what the freight forwarder cannot do is the freight forwarder cannot issue the health certificates uh, issued by the USDA. They cannot uh, process. Uh, uh, certificates of origin. Um, these are all uh, documents that have to be done either by the plant or the warehouse, uh, not by the freight forwarder. Um, and last but not least, find out what their markup is. Um, traditional freight forwarders tend to mark up between 10 to 30 percent uh, of their quoted price. Um, their overheads are very, very large. Um, all the ones that I mentioned, uh, or uh, the, the, the big ones like uh, uh, Kuninagel, uh, DSV, DB Shankar, have been around for years. Um, they're multinational. They've done business uh, the same for decades and it's worked very well for them, but it's based on manual labor. Um, so their markups are substantially higher uh, than let's say an automated freight forwarder like Transship. So you should check to make sure that uh, you know what their markups are 
such that you can factor that into your pricing. Uh, things that you may want to uh, watch out for uh, on freight forwarders um, is that, first of all, like I said, um, the multinational ones are really big, uh, gigantic companies um, <clears throat> who've been doing business the same way for decades, uh, very manually operated, reliant um, on telephone calls, emails, they still even fax uh, documents to each other. Uh, it can take them hours, days, sometimes even weeks to get back to you with a quote. Um, so be aware of that. Um, it is part um, of their uh, modus operandi. Um, like I said, the, uh, uh, the more you automate, uh, the more efficient and clear um, the transaction uh, will be. Um, and communication is key also. So um, uh, uh, a lot of times uh, shippers want to know where the containers are at, what's going on, you know, why is there a delay, why are issues happening? you will run into communication issues with traditional freight forwarders. For whatever reason, they may be too busy, whatever it is, lack of motivation, whatever it may be, you have to be on their uh, tail to make sure that, um, that they're providing you with in information that you want. Again, uh, working with automated uh, uh, freight forwarders like Transship, um, we provide a lot of the information in real time due to our tracking abilities. So you'll know where your container is at, what the temperature and humidity inside the container is, any tampering. Um, some of the traditional freight forwarders are lacking from that perspective, um, so you should uh, consider that when choosing uh, which freight forwarder. Visibility and traceability uh, of your shipment is a must. Um, uh, we do live uh, in modern days right now, 2021. Um, this is not uh, something that should be uh, unique, even though it still is to an extent. Um, so um, some ocean carriers and maybe some freight forwarders can give you GPS. But when you're shipping perishable goods, you really want to know what the temperature and humidity are inside the container, as well as if someone's tampering, for example, with your with your uh, product. So these are all things that you should uh, start to expect, not be surprised if they have it, uh, because information is key in logistics, and and that's really important to have uh, information on, on on what the condition of your shipment is. Ask them what kind of technology they have. Uh, if they tell you. Uh, <clears throat> and I've been told this, uh, our technology, we have Word, Excel, um, and um, email or whatever. That's not technology, with all due respect. Um, you want to know um, what are they doing to automate the process. Uh, so Transship uses API technology, blockchain and document sharing technology, the real-time tracking that I mentioned. Ask these questions. Don't be intimidated uh, to, to ask them because uh, it's your right as a customer to know if they have any technology that... Um, that can benefit you in any way. And uh, even though it's a cliche, uh, if it sounds too good, too good to be true, then head for the hills. Um, freight forwarders, just like any other people are salesmen um, and they will sell you on their, on their service and, and on their concept. Um, don't be uh, 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 gullible and accept and agree everything they tell you. Uh, you should always be careful. Uh, you can never be too careful and um, and ask the questions that are pertinent um, uh, uh, to your to your needs. That's really it uh, for uh, the presentation. This is my contact information. Like I said, <clears throat> Transship is an automated freight forwarding platform. Uh, we basically can do uh, bookings in as little as a few seconds compared to hours, days, or weeks. Um, we do specialize in perishable goods such as frozen beef, poultry, pork. Uh, vegetables, dairy, we're getting to pharmaceuticals. Um, and if you have any questions or comments or issues, uh, we'd be very happy to hear from you. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for taking the time uh, to listen to my lecture and uh, have a great show. Thank you very much.